Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking about conditional access policies as part of the Azure Active Directory security functions. I'm going to explain to you what a conditional access policy is. I'm going to also tell you how you can create one and why you should create one. This is a pretty common question that we get a lot of the time. We tend to get a lot of questions around how we can do a bit more than multi-factor authentication or how we can have a bit more visibility or a bit more control over what type of devices or what type of users or what countries people are coming from when they're signing into our apps and our services. So we're going to cover that today. If you are enjoying the content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's start with what a conditional access policy actually is. I'm going to read you the Microsoft definition because that's probably the best way to do it. And I'll leave a link in the description below so that you guys can actually open that link and have a read as well. So what I found in the TechNet article is the most simple way that I could explain it as well. A conditional access policy at its simplest is an if then else statement. If a user wants to access a resource, then they must complete an action. For example, a payroll manager wants to access the payroll application and is required to do multi-factor authentication to access it. I thought that this bit was also good. Administrators are faced with two primary goals, empower users to be productive wherever and whenever, and also protect the organization's assets. So why is a conditional access policy actually useful? Well, there's plenty of reasons. I'll give you some today. I'm sure you can think of some of your own that exist in your own organization or some requirements that you have that might help you customize your own policy. So let's say, for example, all of your sign-ins, all of your users are always in one country. So let's say they're always in Australia, for example. So let's say that people are always authenticating from Australia. They're always actually signing in and using their devices and the apps and the services in the 365 environment in Australia. So then why would you even bother having this whole attack vector open from all these different countries? Now that's a really good and popular use case for using conditional access policy. So what we can do there is we can make sure that all the people from every location other than Australia cannot sign in. So we will only allow people from Australian IP addresses to sign in. That eliminates a whole bunch of attack vectors on your 365 environment from a whole heap of different countries. Yes, I understand it's not a be or end all solution because people use VPNs and hackers have many ways to get in there, but it's a great way to just eliminate a lot of risk all at once. The next option is, let's say you are completing multi-factor authentication on every single sign-in request, but your users are complaining that when they're on the corporate network, so when they are actually in the office, they're on the corporate network and they're considered secure because it's a secure location and there's physical security there. Why are they also getting multi-factor authentication requests when they're actually on site? That's another use case for conditional access policies because we can go in and say that users coming from this IP address, which will be your own IP address for your own organization, do not get multi-factor authentication. So when the user is signing in from the corporate network, they are not getting multi-factor authentication requests to get into Microsoft Exchange, for example. Another really good use case for conditional access policies is to block legacy authentication. I talk about it a lot. But if you've got multi-factor authentication turned on and some of your users are still using legacy auth, then they can easily bypass multi-factor authentication without even realizing. We can block all types of legacy authentication using conditional access policies. And I recommend that all organizations do this one because it's very easy to deploy and it eliminates a lot of risk as well. We can create all sorts of scenarios in conditional access policies because like Microsoft said, it's really an if then statement. So let's say the user is coming from this IP address, but they're coming from a BYOD device, a device that's not enrolled in Intune, then still MFA them. If a user is coming from Australia, but they are using a Android device, then still MFA them. There's lots of things that we can sort of make up and it really can be tailored very well to suit your organization's needs. And it is a much more versatile solution than just turning on multi-factor authentication and assuming that the rest of your environment is secure. So as we move to more Azure AD authentication, as a lot of organizations are moving their type of legacy authentication or their authentication from all sorts of apps into Azure AD, conditional access is a great way to add a layer of security into all of these applications. So even for example, if you are allowing your users to get onto the VPN. So let's say you have like a FortiGate firewall and your users are using VPN to connect to that FortiGate firewall 
and they're using Azure AD for authentication. If you go and block all the requests from all other countries except Australia, then that's a massive attack vector that you've stopped as well. So let's get into how you can actually create some of them. So keep in mind, you do actually have to have Azure Active Directory P1 licensing. It's not a free license. You can get it as an additional add-on to your existing licensing. So keep that in mind. You might not have to actually purchase a whole you know, E3 or E5 license for it. Speak to your Microsoft consultants about that, or you can speak to me if you like in the comment section, or you can message me on LinkedIn or whatever you want. But just have a look at what is available to you already. A lot of people pay for P1 licensing and they just don't know that they do and they are actually got it available but they don't have anything configured. So that's something I see a lot too. Okay, so if I log into portal.azure.com and I go to Azure Active Directory and I go to security down here, I can see that I have many different things in here like conditional access. Now, conditional access, I've got a couple for my own tenant. Uh, you can see that I have blocked legacy authentication and that I have also blocked access from other countries, so anywhere outside of Australia. So let's give you an example of this. I've already actually completed this one, but I'll show you the settings within this one. In this conditional access policy, it is affecting all users. You can actually go through here and exclude certain users or you can exclude guests or directory roles or certain users and groups or you can actually include those same things as well. Now for this one, I'm going to obviously include all users because I want to make sure that all users are affected by this policy. And I've also selected all apps. So in this, I could actually go to select apps and I could actually select certain applications within the environment. So for example, if I only wanted to block access for VPN, then I would find the FortiGate VPN application in here and I would be able to select that and this condition access policy would only apply to that or anything else that I've checked in there. In this case, I want to make sure it's all cloud apps and my conditions are going to be that the locations are all untrusted locations. So I'm going to go selected locations and untrusted locations and I've got a named location here with all countries that aren't Australia, which I will show you in just a moment. And then I'm going to go down to client apps because this is the this is a two part conditional access policy. And I have also blocked Exchange Active Sync and other clients. So I've blocked legacy authentication in this. Then I'm going to go to access controls and I'm going to click here where it says grant. And you can see that I've also blocked access. So basically what this conditional access policy is checking, it's checking that all users and all cloud apps that meet these two conditions do not have access. What I will show you quickly is those named locations. Here I've created this named location here, untrusted locations, and I have selected all countries except Australia. So basically, you won't be able to sign in from any location outside of Australia. Obviously, if I'm ever overseas, I'll have to make some type of exclusion or something like that. You can create your own named locations based on countries. So you can create a named location. Now that doesn't mean that it's trusted or untrusted. It's just a named location. And you can put any type of countries you want in there. And you can also do IP range locations. So we can add IP ranges that the organization might own or that they might actually use as their public IPs. Just make sure that you're not doing this with shared IP or shared public IPs. You only want to really trust the public IPs that you own and that you know have you know some type of physical security around them as well. So for example, you don't want your guest Wi-Fi public IP to be listed as a trusted location. That's probably not a good idea. Okay, now I'll show you the most popular one that I enable on many different organizations, which is basically all users and all apps can only get access to what they need when they actually get a MFA request. So that's a very simple policy. And what we'll do is I'll actually show you how to do that one from scratch. We'll go back to conditional access, a new policy, create new policy. Let's call this MFA for everyone. I think I already have that name. Nope, I don't. Okay. And I'm going to select all users. Make sure when you're doing this for the first time, you don't lock yourself out. You get a warning here as well to, to do that. Make sure you have an exclusion. So you can go exclude and you can click users and groups and you can maybe select one of your accounts and exclude them from within this policy. 
Make sure you do that just in case you have any sort of issues, you won't be able to get back into the portal. So we're gonna go back here, we're gonna go to all users, and we're gonna go to cloud apps, and we're gonna say all cloud apps. I don't want, there's no conditions, I don't wanna put any exemptions for this one, but if I did, I would go to locations, and I would say configure yes, and I would say exclude, and selected locations, I would select my trusted IP, so trusted locations, or my MFA trusted IP, so if I don't want to MFA from a public IP address that I own. Then I will go to grant, and I will go to grant access, but require multi-factor authentication. I'll click select, and this warning will come up again, and it will tell me if I want to exclude myself, and I'll click create, and that's all. Okay, so there is another feature which we should talk about quickly, which is the what if feature. So let's say, for example, if someone is trying to sign in, and when they're trying to sign in, they're not getting you know, a certain MFA request, or they're getting too many, or they're being able to access something which they shouldn't, and someone is saying that it's a conditional access policy causing the issue, we can actually check that using the what if functionality. So for example, if Elias Atty is signing into any of the cloud apps, and Elias Atty is using a desktop client or other client, which has a strong possibility to be using legacy authentication. So let's say we've picked those three conditions. So Elias Atty is signing into any cloud app and using some type of old client or legacy client. Then we can click what if. We can then see exactly what type of policies Elias is going to be exposed to during that sign in. And one of them is going to be this one, the block access one, because he's using legacy authentication. So we can see from here, the state is on and Elias wouldn't have been able to access anything. So in this section, we can see the policies that will apply, and in this section, we can see the policies that will not apply. So obviously, we've had two here, one being MFA and one being block. Block is going to win in this situation because it's going to be prioritized over granting access after MFA. I hope that helps. I hope that gives you a better understanding of what conditional access policies are and how you can implement them in your own organizations. I'm sure there's plenty you can think of straight away that are going to help in your organization. And if you need any help, then please reach out. Otherwise, please like the video and subscribe for more. We'll see you next time.